Welcome to episode 15 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folktales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we learn how Freyr sits on Odin's throne and sees a woman cannot live without in the myth of Skinner's journey. Freyr had no business to be in Odin's hall, Valhalskuf, and he had no right at all to sit in the high seat, Hildgaskelf, and look out over all the worlds. That was right only of Odin and his wife Frigg. Freyr narrowed his eyes and looked north into Jotunheim. What did he see? A large, handsome hall belonging to the giant Gymir. And what did he see next? A woman coming out of this hall. Her name was Gard. She was Gymir's daughter. She seemed to be made of light or clothed in sparkling light. And when she raised her arms to close the hall doors, the dome of the sky and the sea surrounding the earth at once grew brighter. Because of her, all the worlds were hidden in a flash of brilliant, icy light. Freyr looked and longed. The more he looked, the more he was unable not to look. His eyes burned like fireballs. His only desire was to win guard. Freyr gazed at her until she had crossed a courtyard into her own hall. The worlds grew shadowy, and the gods lowered his eyes. Then he left Hillskelf and crept out of the hall. The god of the world paid for presuming to sit in Hillskelf. He ached with an endless sad longing. He spoke to no one and wanted no one to speak to him. He could not sleep. He did not want to eat. He did not want to drink. He could neither escape his fierce desire nor see how it satisfied him. Niord, Freyr's father, became concerned about his son. He called to Freyr's servant, Shining Skirnir, and told him, Go and ask my son what has upset him. Why is he so angry or else so sad that he will not even share his feelings and set them free? I will ask him that, said Skirnir, but I won't like the answer. Skirnir approached Freyr and said to him, First of the gods, why must you stay here in your hall, day in and day out without food or drink or sleep? Why do you shun company? <laughs> what good would it do, said Freyr? No amount of talk can help. Nothing can blunt this anguish. And what if the elf beams do shine every day? My f mind is full of gloom. There is no grief. You cannot tell it to me, said Skirnir. We were children together. We always trusted one another. Then Freyr unlocked his word hoard. He told Skirnir how he had seen Gard from Hilskelf, and how she brightened the nine worlds with her radiance, and how he longed for her. No man, he said, has ever loved a woman as I love her, and no god would ever agree to our union. Skirnir listened and nodded. Go, said Freyr, whether her father likes it or not, bring her to me and I'll give you great rewards. Skirnir smiled. Give me the horse that follows its nose through the dark and will not bridle it magic, flickering flames. Give me the sword that will fight against giants of its own accord. Then Freyr handed over two of his greatest treasures. He lived to regret that at Ragnarok. A sword to ward off the fire demon's search would have been handy. Skirnir mounted and made off at once, and as he galloped out of Freyr's courtyard, his horse's hoofs struck fire from the paving stones. He came to the banks of the living in the early evening. Skirnir was ferried across the river into Jotunheim, and then night fell. Can you feel this darkness passing against us, said Skirnir to the horse, and they galloped across lifeless flatland. Now we must head for the fells where the frost giants live. You and I share the same fate. We'll either get home again quickly or fall into the hands of some dreadful troll. 
Skianir rode through the night, and during the night he and his mount galloped up a mountain pass and came to a curtain of fire. Freyr's horse did not even break its pace and galloped straight through the searing magic flames. At daybreak, Skirnir, the Shining One, came down into a saucer of land covered with sour gray grass. It was a loveless kind of place, surrounded by desolate hills that welled like breast and were pocked by outcrops of rock. In the middle of this depression stood Gimir's Hall, and next to it his daughter Gerd's Hall, guarded by a fence. A pair of hounds were chained to the gatepost, and they were not pleasant. Skirnir looked around and saw a single herdsman sitting way up on the hillside. He turned away from the halls and rode up to him. Nothing escapes your eyes, Skirnir said. Sitting here on this hall, tell me, how can I muzzle those hounds and enter guard's hall? The herdsman looked at Skirnir and said stonily, are you doomed to die or are you dead already? There's no way in which you can talk to Gimir's daughter this year or next year or ever. Skirnir could see that the herdsman did not mean to help him. He wheeled away without more ado, and as he galloped down the slope again, called out over his shoulder, Fearless is better than a faint heart for any man who puts his nose out of doors. The length of my life and the day of my death were fated long ago. In her hall, their guard heard the coming and going, barking and shouting, and asked her servant, what is all that noise that echoes round these halls? The ground shakes, the hall itself shutters. A man outside the fence, he's dismounting now, and now he has set his horse to graze. Welcome him, then, said Gerd coldly. My heart says this visitor is my brother's murderer. Nevertheless, tell him a horn of mead awaits him in his hall. So Skirnir passed unharmed between the disappointed hounds and walked into the hall. It was colder in there than he would have wished. Dressed entirely in white, guard came forward to welcome him. Are you one of the elves or one of the gods? How are you able to pass through the flickering flames to these halls? I'm no elf, said Skirnir, and I'm no god, though it's true that I've come through the fire curtain. He looked at guard and dipped his hands into the pockets of his cloak. These, he said, these are eleven of the apples of youth. They're yours, Garda. I'll give them all to you if you promise yourself to Freyr and call him your darling dear. Never, said Gard icily. No one is going to buy my love with golden apples and promises of youth. And however long we live, Freyr and I will never share one roof. Skirnir reached into the pocket of his cloak again. I've brought you this arm ring, he said. It's Dropnir. Long ago, Odin placed it on Baldir's pyre. Eight rings of its own weight drop from it every ninth night. Be that as it may, I have no wish for it, said Gard, and her voice chilled Skirnir to the marrow. There's wealth enough in Ymir's hall. Skirnir continued to smile. You see this honed and gleaming sword here in my hand. I'm going to hack off your head unless you do as I ask. Forrest will get Freyr nowhere, said Gard. Her cold eyes glittered. Neither Freyr nor anybody else. But if my father, Gimir, finds you here, I'm sure he'll be glad to flex his muscles. Skinner was undaunted. Look again at this honed and gleaming sword. The old giant will fall to his knees before this blade. Your father is doomed to die. Then Skinner laid down Freyr's sword and raised his own staff. Gard gazed at it spellbound. I will touch you, Gerd, with this magic stuff. I will teach you and tame you. You must make your way to the place where you'll never meet and never talk to any man again. You will sit on the eagle's hill at the end of heaven and stare down at hell's gates, and although you must eat, all food will seem as vile to you as the sallow snake seems to men. You'll become a sight to make our blood run cold, the frost giant 
Grimnir will gape at you. You'll become a better known than the watchmen of the gods as you peer out bleakly from your windy penthouse. Rage and longing tears and torment will rack you. However, you twist and turn, you'll not escape your fate. A troubled heart, a double portion of misery. Here in Yotahem, spiteful spirits will pick at you and prick you every day, and every day you will crawl to the halls of frost giants, crawl for no purpose, and crawl without even hope. While others are glad you will grieve, your body will shake with sobs. You'll live always amongst three-headed giants and never once sleep with a husband. May lust grip you. May despair sap you. Be like thistles tossed into the hayloft and trampled underfoot. I went to the dark wood, the dripping forest, to find a magic branch. I found this staff. The greatest of the gods, Odin, is enraged with you. Freyr will lose no love for you. Guard, worst of women, you have unleashed the wrath of all the gods. Frost giants, listen. Rock giants, listen. Sons of Sutung, listen. And hear me, gods and Asgard. I forbid this woman to meet with any man. I forbid this woman joy of any man. Rimgnir, pale and unearthly in his shroud of frost, is the giant who will enjoy you in the gloom near Hell's Gate. Under the roots of Yggdrasil, foul corpses will press on you horns full of piss. However great your thirst, that is the best drink there will be for you. That is my curse. Guard, I have inscribed a charm for you, sealed with the three runes, longing and raving and lust. But what I have written, I can erase if I have a good reason. As she listened to Skirnir's spells, Guard began to tremble terribly. At length, she raised her eyes slowly and gazed at her guest. Skirnir, she said, you are welcome here. Drink from this frost cup filled with me for you. Now her eyes no longer glittered like broken ice. They were filled with tears. I never believed, she said, that I could swear to love one of the veneer. Skinner lowered his staff and took the frost cup. Before I ride home, I must know everything. When will you meet the son of Niord? There is a forest, Bari, that we both know well. It is beautiful there and peaceful, and their guard will give herself to the son of Niord nine nights hence. Then Skinner bowed. He took his leave of guard and walked out of her chilly hall. He called his horse to him, remounted, and rode swiftly back to Asgard before it was morning. Sleepless, Freyr heard him coming. He stood outside his hall, impatient and anxious. Skinner smiled and, taking his time, dismounted. Skinner, before you unsaddle, before you go foot forward, tell me, were you successful? Have you brought ecstasy or anguish out of Jotunheim? The god and his servant stood in a shaft of soft orange light near the entrance to Freyr's hall. Skinner gathered his cloak around him and looked at Freyr. There is a forest, Bari, that we both know well. It is beautiful there and peaceful, and their guard will give herself to the son of Niord nine nights hence. One night is long, cried Freyr, and two nights are longer. How can I bear three? How can I... He raised his arms and threw back his head and closed his eyes. Often enough, I've thought, a whole month shorter than nine, one such night charged with this desire. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.